I-35 North in shirts if you can. We'll have an update next. Let's look out there with live cam this morning. We are at 70 degrees. It's very humid out there. And we're going to be checking in with Mike very soon to see when we will see that sun. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you, everyone. It's Thursday, March 23rd. Thanks for joining us. We're going to check in with Mike in just a moment, but we've had a busy morning on the roadways. Let's go ahead and go back to Stephen Cavazos. That's right, Steph. Uh, we are taking a look here at 35 northbound. Uh, this is again the view at Shirts Parkway, but what we are seeing are folks trying to exit FM 3009. And we had our friends at Trans Guide that actually zoomed in on that sign just to confirm that information for us. What we are looking at, unfortunately, is a result of a deadly crash that was reported earlier this morning. We'll talk to Katrina in just a moment, but let's get a look at how that mess has shaped up there because now what we are seeing are folks pretty much just stuck trying to exit there at FM 3009. We do encourage you and Church PD wants us to advise you guys avoid this area because it's obviously already a very busy corridor in the morning, but when you have a crash like this, the investigation can take some time. So obviously it's going to cause some delays for anybody heading northbound along 35. That buildup is stretching back now past two miles there. You can see it on the map with the traffic that is moving at that exit. It's just seven miles per hour, so it's very slow right now. Uh, I have been combing through some different solutions. We'll get to that a little bit later on, but we do have to get to Katrina Weber, who has her eyes on the ground. Katrina, unfortunately, just an ugly morning out there. Well, good morning, uh, Stephen Yao. It is a 53 year old motorcyclist who was killed, according to police. And uh, this is the result ever since this traffic on the access road, which is getting heavier by the minute. Uh, we still have police on the main lanes of the highway conducting their investigation as they have been since uh, after two o'clock this morning. Just within the last half hour, we saw them uh, bring in a tow truck and load up the motorcycle that was involved and then take it away. But police are still there, still uh, investigating, taking measurements and so forth as they try to understand exactly what went wrong. They did tell us that the motorcyclist, for some reason, ran into an 18 wheeler that was in the process of being towed. And he is the one who was killed here this morning. We don't know anything about the people or the person in the truck that was involved or where that truck is. We have not seen it since we've been out here. Uh, it's been gone from the scene. But uh, again, police still staying here as they investigate and no word from them just yet on how long this will take. But in the meantime, again, traffic being forced off the highway onto this access road. And we have seen it get pretty heavy here from, uh, from time to time. If you can, uh, as Stephen said, avoid the area. Reporting live in shirts, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. And of course, she's going to keep us updated throughout the uh, the rest of the morning. All right, here's a look at the skyline from our camera down there, Brook City Base. And yeah, at least we can see the, uh, the skyline. And there's a lot of humidity out there, though. There's no fog really here in town because we do have a decent breeze. So that's helping to prevent a lot of fog from forming up. But temperatures are well above normal by a good 15 to 20 degrees. 71 out there at the airport, 72 at Stinson right now. A ton of humidity. It's actually gone up slightly compared to yesterday even. Now it will be changing though, but it's going to be about I'll uh, say 24, almost 30 hours, so not till roughly mid morning tomorrow. Here's the wind coming in here out of the uh, southeast at a good 10, 15 miles per hour, a little uh, gusty at times. All that's doing really well, besides preventing some fog from forming up, is pulling in all that humidity out there. So don't be surprised if you run into a little bit of mist on the windshield and on the roads. Mold oak are on the moderate side, little bits of hackberry and mulberry. The updated count will come out anywhere between about 7, 730 this morning. Temperatures aren't going to be moving for the next couple of hours. We'll have that little bit of, you know, maybe a patch of fog here or there, some mist and drizzle throughout the morning hours, and then we'll make it up to 78 already above the normal high at noon and we'll top off at 86 later on today. More sunshine than the past couple of days, which good news, bad news. More sunshine means it's just going to be very hot, very humid. Front's going to move through mid late morning tomorrow. Some showers and thunderstorms potentially on the strong side. There is that uh, isolated to a scattered uh, strong to severe storm out in the hill country. That's going to be in the wee hours tomorrow morning. Most activity, though, up to the north. In behind this front, some beautiful weather. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark.
Mike, thank you. This morning, the search continues for the suspects involved in the death of a 17 year old from here in San Antonio. This is a story that we've been following since it happened back in 2020 and Crime Stoppers is issuing a new alert as that search continues. Alyssa Cole staying on top of this story. She joins us now live in the KSAT 12 newsroom. Alyssa, what can you tell us about the case? Yes, Mark Stephanie, the victims in this case, Sebastian Vasquez Carpio was first reported missing back on September 9th, 2020, just after midnight. Now here's video from when it happened. Police tell us later that day, officers discovered that he had been shot. They also learned that after the shooting, the suspects carjacked someone and used the vehicles to get rid of his body. That vehicle was then set on fire. We we're told the suspect also burned evidence of the crime before burning the vehicle. Now call Crime Stoppers if you have any information about this case. That number is right there on your screen, 224 STOP. As we mentioned, this is a story we have been following closely, and it is one of our most recent topics for our Texas crime story. You can find it on our website at KSAT.com, our YouTube channel, KSAT subscription page, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Mark, Stephanie. Alyssa, thank you so much. New this morning, lots of questions remain after a man was attacked overnight. Happened just after one on West Ridgewood Court. That's near 10 in Hildebrand. The victim told police he was walking home when a man cut him on the head and stabbed him in the chest. Police say he managed to get to a relative's house to call for help. He was taken to University Hospital. We have no word on his condition. And we have learned the names of the people killed in a double murder suicide at a Northside apartment complex earlier this week. The Bear County Medical Examiner identifying the family as 43 year old Jeremy Martinez, 37 year old Shannon Martinez and seven year old Bailey Martinez. San Antonio police say Jeremy Martinez shot and killed his wife and young daughter before turning that gun on himself. Their bodies were found on Monday morning at Winding Creek Apartments on Northwest Military Highway near Wurzbach Parkway after officers went to conduct a welfare check. Right now it is 607. New developments expected today in two separate investigations involving former President Trump. The more serious development involves those classified documents found at Mar-a-Lago. The legal pressure on him growing. Trump is turning to politics, launching a new attack on Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. ABC's Jacqueline Lee is outside the courthouse in New York City with more. This morning, a lawyer representing former President Trump in the Mar-a-Lago classified documents case is preparing to appear before a grand jury. A panel of judges yesterday rejected Trump's effort to block his lawyer, Evan Corcoran, from testifying. It comes after a judge determined there's compelling preliminary evidence that Trump knowingly misled his attorneys so they would file a sworn statement, even though he knew it was false. Sources say Corcoran is expected to turn over documents as soon as today. Meanwhile, barricades surrounding the Manhattan courthouse as the DA investigates whether Trump's hush money to porn star Stormy Daniels broke campaign spending laws. Sources say at least one more witness may be called before the grand jury decides whether to indict Trump. In the meantime, Trump is lashing out at Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, his expected rival in the 2024 presidential race. Trump calling him an average governor, criticizing DeSantis' record on COVID and education, and writing, Ron DeSantis is not working for the people of Florida as he should be. He's too busy chatting with a ratings challenge TV host from England, desperately trying to rescue his failing campaign. I don't know how to spell the sanctimonious. I don't really know what it means, but I, you know, I kind of like it's long. It's got a lot of vowels. I mean, so we'd go with that. That's fine. In his interview with Piers Morgan, DeSantis appeared to question Trump's leadership. The way we run the government, I think, is no daily drama, focus on the big picture and put points on the board. And I think that that's something that's very important. Back here in New York, the grand jury is expected to reconvene today where it's possible they'll hear from that additional witness. Jacqueline Lee, ABC News, New York. 609, 70 degrees. Coming up later on Good Morning America, if you thought getting tickets to a Taylor Swift concert was exciting, how about getting married at one concert? Now, this is one lucky couple tying the knot during one of her shows. The newlyweds will be live on GMA to share their story. And after the break, a look at some of the top consumer news stories that are trending right now. And let's look out there with live cam. Yes, a humid start to your day, but we're going to look forward to some sun and we're going to check in with Mike to see what we can expect this weekend. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Just about 6.13. Forget about free baseball on Apple TV Plus. Last season, 
Major League Baseball offered some exclusive Friday night games on the platform for free. This year, fans have to pay $7 monthly fee to get all the games. Verizon is launching a new service to rival Zoom. So get this, it's called Blue Jeans Basic, which allows up to 25 users to take part in unlimited free meetings with no time constraints. And the best part, subscriptions are free. And pay by Palm at Panera. Lots of peas there. Uh, it's testing Amazon's palm scanning technology at two locations in St. Louis. Panera says it meant to offer customers a fast way to pay and connect with their loyalty program. The plan is to expand the test to more restaurants in the coming months. Why are you popping your peas? I a lot know. of them. Just for fun. <laughs> Just for fun. Because yes. I can. 613, what's not fun? The traffic situation no. on the northeast side. Very serious situation over there. Yeah, very serious. Uh, but we're going to get you through it, okay? 35 here northbound. Uh, this is the shot from Shirts Parkway. We've been showing it to you throughout the morning. What we are actually seeing is traffic exit there at FM3009. Again, we had our friends at Trans Guide zoom in on that shot so we can confirm that that's where they're exiting. And unfortunately, it has led to a very big back, a bumper to bumper there as folks are trying to make their way off of that exit. I did mention this earlier. Shirts PD, if you have to wake up and maybe head through the area, they're advising just avoid this particular spot northbound near FM3009 because unfortunately, it's a site of a major crash. Unfortunately, the news has not been good. We understand that at least one man has died from his injuries. Katrina Weber will have more on that story a little bit later on this morning. But in the meantime, quick solution here is what we have for you. Take loop 16 to 4 southbound and exit FM 78. I've outlined that for you in blue. It may take you a little while to get to shirts or wherever your destination is north of 35, but I would say it beats sitting in that access road uh, where we're going to see bumper to bumper traffic. What you'll do is continue along FM 78 and and then turn left on FM 1103 once you get to Cibolo. Continue a little bit further up, and there you'll hit along, hit 35 northbound there uh, if you take the back roads. Again, it's just a solution there for you if you do have to travel, and if you want to look for an alternative route, I would advise you to just start planning ahead of time. Next on, I'll give you a look at the metropolitan area. Thankfully here, guys, it's been quiet. We're not seeing any other issues. The big problem, again, will be right here at 35 uh, at Shirts Parkway. Again, that's just a shot from TransGuide. That exit is FM3009. That solution I offered for you, I was combing through a lot of the maps there. That may be one of the alternatives as opposed to just taking I-10. Well, and again, and to your credit, Stevie, you've been telling folks to avoid this area yes. since we went on the air this morning. Yeah. This just proves the sheer volume. Yes. Right. Even if all those people took your advice, we're still going to see stacking yes. like we're uh -huh. seeing right now. Uh huh. Exactly. And listen, uh, travel at your your own risk there in terms of if you want to avoid the area, you can. Mm -hmm. That's what we advise you. That's what Shirts PD is advising. But that's what you're going to expect. You're going to sit in that traffic for a while. I mean, okay. you said earlier it was like backed up two miles. I mean, yeah, it's about almost getting backed up towards 16 yes. to 4 by yeah. now. So. Uh, minute by minute. So hopefully yeah. they get your warning well before that. Yeah, yeah let's help our friends at PD out. All right, temperatures are very, very warm, very humid. A little bit of mist out there. We do have a, a decent breeze, so that's preventing a lot of fog from forming up. But wow, I mean, it's just, yeah, this is like midsummer kind of uh, humidity. And temperatures, 86 for a high, about 10 above normal. More sunshine today. That's just going to heat things up. And that southeasterly wind at 15 to 20 miles per hour will just continue to pull in all the humidity. And that's going to be feeding a few showers, maybe a couple of thunderstorms tonight. Love this picture. Once again, taken out there by Brennan, by Marianne. Thank you so much for the KSAC Connect shot. Beautiful rolling fields of blue bonnets. Love it. So we've got, at least we can see all the uh, the lights of the, the skyline, but there's still plenty of humidity out there. Like I said, it's the breeze that's helping us out this morning. 71 in town, 72 Stinson, 73 down the road in Pleasanton, 60s elsewhere. Bunch of humidity, dew points. When you get up in the mid upper 60s, it's just plain old humid. Kind of kind of pushes back when you uh, walk out the back door. Wind is out of the southeast, 5, 10, 15, close to 20 miles per hour. We do have some gusts on top of that, up to 20 at Bernie stage, 22 Lost Maples. Again, this is helping prevent some of the fog from forming up. So that's working in our benefit. And throughout the rest of today, we are going to be seeing clouds break up somewhat, and we'll have more sunshine later on today. Now, once again, we've been talking about this front moving through in the overnight hour. Hours and the, the timing of it continues to kind of slow down. It's not going to be until mid to late morning tomorrow when it makes it on through here. So this will start to form up in the wee hours tomorrow morning and we'll have that line of showers and a few thunderstorms. Now some of these may be on the stronger side, potentially severe in the hill country, but as far as a line of thunderstorms, this is just not 
really the situation setting up for it. Yes, we will have a couple of them around there. It is going to be wet tomorrow morning at times. The majority of everything is going to be further to the north, and that's going to clear us out very quickly once that moves on through here. Once again, different uh, computer model. It does have this one kind of paints things in with a bit of a broad brush, so it does have some of those showers there. The majority further up to the north, and this will be the situation in through the about mid morning once that front moves through. Then we clear out Saturday looks great. Fantastic day. Likewise with tomorrow afternoon, humidity comes back in here on Sunday. A few more clouds chance of rain then on Monday. And again, this is kind of a, a broad brush painting in as far as rain chances and we'll have another shot at some rain. It looks like by the uh, mid to latter portion of next week. Right now, not great rain chances middle of next week, but at least there's going to be that that shot for it. There's the outlook for the potential for anything severe isolated, the lighter shade scattered strong to severe storms. High winds and hail will be the biggest threats. But again, the majority of anything stronger is going to be further up to the north in behind that front. Temperatures don't drop down, so that's the other big difference between this week's front and last week's front. However, another kind of shot of cooler air comes on in here, so we're going to be actually below normal with high temperatures first part of next week and low temperatures over the weekend will be closer to where they should be. And then a quick little shot of cooler air coming in here by the middle of next week. So the forecast today, we are going to make it up to 78 already above normal at noon. Mostly cloudy skies, high temperature up to 86, partly cloudy, breezy, so more sunshine. That's going to help to heat things up and then front's going to move through tomorrow morning and we will have sh some showers, few thunderstorms out there. The majority of everything will be further to the north. Of course, we're going to be on the lookout if anything should uh, get a little bit nasty out there and then clearing out tomorrow afternoon. Saturday, great Sunday, not bad and cooler normal temperatures next week. It's been so cool yeah. and calm lately, even with the rain that yes. I almost forgot about we're getting into severe weather season yes. and we need to be putting that hat on and be thinking about those things. Yeah, and, and again, there is the chance, but it's not really a great chance mm -hmm. tomorrow. So don't we'll, we'll be here watching it. I know you will. You'll yeah. let us know. Good news. Thank you. Mike. 620, 70 degrees. And new details are coming in about the Colorado dentist accused of poisoning his wife from one of his former employees. That's next in your GMA First Look. She found it. The feeling of finding the psoriasis treatment she's been looking for. So Tic2 is the first of its kind, once daily pill for moderate to severe plaque psoriasis for the chance at clear or almost clear skin. It's like the feeling of finding that outfit psoriasis tried to hide from you or finding your swimsuit is ready for prime time. Once Daily Sotic2 is proven to get more people clearer skin than the leading pill. Don't take if you're allergic to Sotic2. Serious reactions can occur. Sotic2 can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB. Serious infections, cancers including lymphoma, muscle problems, and changes in certain labs have occurred. Tell your doctor if you have an infection, liver or kidney problems, high triglycerides, or had a vaccine or plan to. Sotic2 is a Tic2 inhibitor. Tic2 is part of the Jack family. It's not known if Sotic2 has the same risks as Jack inhibitors. Find what plaque psoriasis has been hiding. Ask your dermatologist about Sotic2 for clearer skin. So clearly you. Sotic2. In this morning's GMA First Look, new details on the dentist accused of poisoning his wife from one of his former employees. I still can't wrap my head around it. I mean, Courtney Lyons worked in Dr. James Craig's office. Craig now accused of secretly poisoning his wife by putting arsenic and cyanide in her protein shakes. The once beloved dentist now facing first degree murder charges. There's a group of us that all work together that have been on you know, messenger kind of talking about this because it's hard. It's very hard. It's devastating. Um, that's not it. Obviously, the evidence is out. It is it is what it is. You know, we have to accept it, but it's not. It's so shocking. Like we we all adored this man. Like we always just always looked up to him. He was the best. He was funny. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on this developing case. Plus, legal expert Dan Abrams weighs in live with your GMA First Look. I'm Kana Whitworth, ABC News, Los Angeles. Back here at home, a fictional drama set in the 1970s on San Antonio's west side will premiere tonight at the historic Guadalupe Theater. Chato's Bridge is a story of love and loyalty, but there's also the desire for vengeance. The play by Mono Riojas Aguilar is not only set in the west side where he grew up, Jorge Pena says it portrays many of the people he and the playwright knew. 
guys that somehow always got in trouble, but somehow there's always a hero there. This is a play about really good kids who were put in a really terrible situation. Chata's Bridge premieres at the Guadalupe Theater tonight at 7 o'clock. There will also be performances tomorrow and this weekend. We have ticket info uh, right now on KSAT.com. And time now, 625 and 70 degrees for now. Checking the roads with TransGuide, and our big problem remains. I-35 in that corridor right along the Shirt City limits. You're seeing some of those flashing lights. I mean, a huge line of headlights coming right at us. And that one really tells the story. I-35 North at Shirts Parkway. We'll get an update from Stephen after this break. Outside with live cam, more of the same this morning in the weather department, but the forecast is really taking a backseat to our traffic situation on this early Thursday morning. Welcome back 630 on your Thursday. It's March 23rd. Thanks for joining us. Yes, you're right. It's been a mess on the roadways, especially that situation there at I-35. Let's check back with our Stephen Cavazos. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is what we were really worried about is that folks were not going to heed our warning to avoid the area. And even if you did, it's probably going to still be a backup out there. Check this out. Uh, this is along I-35, the shot from Shirts Parkway. We've been showing it to you all morning long. Now, don't forget that the exit that we're seeing out there, although this is a shot from Shirts Parkway, that exit is FM3009 and folks are being diverted off of the main lanes of 35 northbound due to a deadly crash that was reported earlier this morning. We'll speak to Katrina Weber in just a moment, but you can see that unfortunately first responders have blocked off a good stretch of the highway there as they work to clear the scene up. That crash was reported earlier this morning and it's led to a huge backup, which is why we see a lot of that red that is building out there along 35 North. Uh, again, exiting uh, at FM3009. So it's going to be a mess for a while longer, passing at least two miles there in that backup. While we're at it, let's just show you the metropolitan area. Now, although things still look quiet, I just saw an update from TxDOT. It looks like a crash may have popped up on the southeast side at Loop 410 eastbound at Villa Main. We'll get a shot from TransGuide and we'll get that pinpointed on our map. But uh, something that we have been keeping a very close eye on is right here, 35 northbound at Shirts Parkway. Big mess out there. Katrina Weber, unfortunately, a very uh, scary situation for drivers that are trying to travel through the area, but uh, what's the latest? Yeah, you are absolutely right. A big traffic mess. You can see it here behind me all uh, because of an accident that has shut down this highway. Uh, it's a 53 year old man on a motorcycle who was killed a little bit after two o'clock this morning. But this has been the situation ever since uh, these lanes of 35 North, just north of FM 3009 closed and traffic being diverted onto the access road. Now, police tell us that what happened is the man on the motorcycle, for some reason, ran into the back of an 18-wheeler that was in the process of being towed. The motorcyclist was killed. Uh, police have been out here investigating ever since. We saw that motorcycle being towed away uh, right before 6 o'clock this morning. We never did see any sign of the 18-wheeler that he hit. We don't know if that stopped somewhere else farther down the road or if it just kept going and didn't realize he hit it. But nonetheless, police are out here. They do have their investigation going on, and that's all the information they were able to share with us. They still haven't been able to tell us exactly when this might clear up and traffic get moving again on the highway. Reporting live in shirts, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. All right, here's a live look outside at the airport. And as you can see, well, traffic on 410 is moving along very well. It does not look like the road is damp. There's been a little bit of mist around this morning. We're not seeing any reduced visibility because we've got a decent breeze out there right now. It is warm. It is humid. 71 degrees. Dew point stands at 66. And there's that wind out of the south to southeast to 11 miles per hour, specifically at the airport. But we're also seeing some gusts right now. Mid upper 60s, low 70s around here. I mean, this is more like what it is in about midsummer and all of this humidity when these numbers get well above 60 and then getting mid and upper 60s. The humidity definitely greets you when you walk outside on a day like this. Wind is again out of the southeast at 10, 15 miles per hour in a lot of spots and a few gusts, like I said, on top of that. Mold and oak are on the moderate side. The updated count is going to be coming out in about an hour or so. So a little mist around here, partly cloudy skies. I think we see more sunshine even than what we saw yesterday. That's just going to help to heat us up. And with all the humidity around here, yeah, just a hot, humid day. Now, the front's going to move through overnight, more like 
early tomorrow morning. It will touch off a couple of showers and thunderstorms, mainly up to the north. There is the risk for a couple of uh, stray potentially severe storms in parts of the hill country, especially. But again, the majority of everything, not completely, but the majority is going to be further up there to the uh, north. So again, a couple of uh, morning storms my, mainly up to the north, then sunny, low humidity once that front moves through about mid late morning and the weekend. Fantastic on Saturday, increasing clouds, bit more uh, humidity on Sunday, but also some lower temperatures going into next week as well. All those details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. Well, the new this morning, South Sand ISD will shut down three of its school campuses. That decision was made last night during a school board meeting. Alyssa Cole joins us live in the case at newsroom. And Alyssa, which schools are closing? Well, the board voted to close two elementary schools and one middle school. The board of trustees voted five to two in favor of closing Kazan Middle School, Athens Elementary, and Kindred Elementary. The three schools came as a recommendation from the superintendent. The board did not specify when the schools will close or where the students will go. But last night, some school board members expressed their concerns about this move. I would like to know what changed that now that I only see three schools to be voted on, to be closed, and, it, and this is just my thought only, which I feel that there was a deal made to save one school and close the other three down, the other three schools down on this side of town. Now here on GMSA, if you've been following this story with us, it's important to remember and note back in January, the board previously voted against closing four schools. Of course, it was the three schools we mentioned, but that fourth school was West Campus High School. Now we don't know what well, we do know. This decision comes nearly a month after South San ISD announced it's facing a $12 million deficit and their student enrollment is also down 20%. It's been that way over the past decade. Mark Steph Stephanie? Alyssa, well, thank you very much. The son of a man killed by aggressive dogs here in San Antonio last month confronted Animal Care Services at its advisory board meeting last night. Raymond Najera lost his father last month. He says it's on ACS to do better. Najera says what happened to his father Ramon was preventable. He says this was a failure of a fragmented system within city services. According to a member from San Antonio City Manager Eric Walsh, there were 114 calls to 911, 42 to 311 about the home where those dogs live. Najera says the attack on his father is proof that different departments in the city need to work together to keep this from happening to anyone else. See something? Say something. They did. I talked to the residents. I spoke with them, and I was, in, I was astonished. Of all the calls they made to these people, about these people, and, no, and then no, nothing happened. Najera says he supports House Bill 4759, which allows for anonymous reporting of aggressive dogs to prevent retaliation here in Texas. You can read more about this story on ksat.com. And some other stories we have here this morning. The Federal Reserve has approved another quarter point interest rate hike in its ongoing effort to curb inflation. That means it will cost Americans even more to borrow money and even to carry credit card debt. The decision comes as financial regulators work to bolster the global banking system. The CEO of TikTok will make a high profile appearance today before a congressional committee. He'll face a grilling on data security and user safety while he makes his own case for why the app shouldn't be banned here in America. Testimony comes at a crucial time for the company that's under increasing pressure from U.S. officials. Time now, 637 and 70 degrees for now. Here's what's coming up after the break. It can happen in an instant. Your car disappears. Auto theft is one of the fastest rising crimes right now. I'll tell you what you can do to protect your property. Coming up. 640, welcome back to GMSA. When you think of the hottest rides in town, you probably have a completely different image in mind compared to what car thieves like. Figures show Kias, Hyundais, and Fords are the brands they're after most these days, and lately they've been stealing them here in San Antonio by the dozens. Katrina Weber tells us why, even if you drive a different brand, your vehicle may not be safe from crooks. Checkout time at this Southeast Side Hotel recently came with an unpleasant surprise. Two out-of-town families found out someone drove away with both of their Ford F-250 pickups. 
On the far west side, Damon Davis had the same look of anguish talking about how thieves took his car. I feel violated. He says cameras showed it took only two minutes. We cut my window, moved, uh, broke my sunroof, got in the car, programmed a key fob, and it was gone like that. Unfortunately, they are not the only victims lately. We've definitely seen an increase in the amount of stolen vehicles. We purposely blurred out Detective Cuellar's face. He works undercover, part of the San Antonio Police Department's nearly two dozen member auto theft division. Just this year alone in January, there's been close to 1,300 stolen vehicles. Thefts also are up in Bear County, nearly double what they were last year. Among the cars most in demand, the Hyundai Sonata and several different Kias, all thanks to a social media challenge that teaches people how to steal them. And the most stolen trucks, all Ford F-Series pickups, although some Dodge, GMC, and Chevys also made the list. We see a lot of these trucks headed down south towards Mexico, whether it's smuggling drugs or persons. Queer says they also see car owners making it easier for criminals. He says more than half the time, people leave their cars unlocked with the keys inside. To cut back on your chances of becoming a car theft victim, police say you should lock up and park in a well-lighted area. They also recommend using one of these old school steering wheel locks to make your car less attractive to thieves. They might try to go for a different vehicle that doesn't have those security measures in place. Still, nothing is crook proof. If your vehicle is stolen, police say the sooner you report it, the greater your chance of getting it back. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Unbelievable scene continues out on the far northeast side in the Shirts area this morning. Definitely be aware of that. Let's check back with Steven. Yes, and I want to remind everyone, please turn on your notifications for your KSAT mobile app because we just sent out another push alert reminding folks it's still closed out there. 35 northbound. This is a shot from Shirts Parkway, but remember, folks are actually exiting FM 3009 there, and you can see, unfortunately, it doesn't appear to be getting any better. This scene, unfortunately, the site of a deadly crash, and first responders have been working to clear this mess up for several hours. So we want to make sure that we give them plenty of room and plenty of space to get that job done. And right now we still want to remind you if you have to head out on 35 a little bit later this morning, avoid the area because you're going to get involved in this mess and you don't want to be sitting there if you're trying to get to work on time. Again, that's along, along 35 northbound near FM 3009. That's where traffic is being forced to divert off of the highway and onto the access road there. Uh, we have been looking for different solutions for you throughout the morning, but it is just an ugly situation on the northeast side. I do want to bring you back here on the southeast side. A crash has also been reported at 410 eastbound at Villa Main, causing a little bit of a buildup. And that's really what we're going to start to see now, guys, is a lot more of that buildup out there. You can see it as it stretches past US 90 and Loop 1604. Uh, and of course, the northwest side along 1604 near Holotus. It is morning rush. And unfortunately, things don't seem to be moving along here at 35 at FM 3009, where that exit is. Uh, again, just uh, avoid that area. I was just uh, talking to Shirts PD earlier this morning. They are thankful for anyone that is taking that advice because it's taking time to clear this mess up. We've talked to Katrina. She's showed us the mess that is still taking place out there. So uh, just avoid the area. Help our first responders out so they can get this mess cleaned up. And that way you can get to where you need to be on time and safely. Mm -mm. I mean, what else can you say? What else can you say? I, I mean, just it's, it's been all morning long yeah. so far. It's At this point, worse. it's like 281 and 10. Yeah. You just go out that way in 46 up to. Yep. Yeah. But unfortunate stuff out there. Yep. Wow. Okay. Uh, on a much, much lighter note, spring is definitely here. And look at the nest with a couple of eggs. Oh. Didn't you say Picture perfect. in your front porch? Uh, yeah, back porch, yeah. In, back porch in my ceiling fan. And yeah. I thought that uh, she left four eggs behind. Uh, and she she's, back. she's back. Oh, good. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, what a great picture. Send us more pictures if you see these, if you can, without bugging mom, you know, send <laughs> some pictures of uh, when they finally hatch, though. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, as you can see, visibility out the airport is pretty good. We do have a lot of clouds. Traffic on 410 is moving along very well. There may be some uh, damp spots on the roads, a little bit of mist out there. There's been some this morning. Uh, temperatures, again, keep talking about how this is like mid kind of mid uh, summer sort of temperatures out there. The humidity to match southeasterly wind. Yes, that is helping to prevent some fog from forming up, but it just continues to pump in all that humidity, which is why we are seeing some of that mist out there. We've got a couple of gusts to uh, 22 at Lost Maples, 18 Balverde, 20 up there at Canyon Lake, 21 at Kerrville, and we'll continue with the 10% a little bit of mist. Temperatures aren't going anywhere this morning. A lot of clouds will start to get up into the mid 70s by late this morning. 
78 at noon, so already above the normal high temperature this time of year. We will see more sunshine later on today, and that's just going to heat us up to 86 degrees, and it is going to be breezy with wind out of the southeast, which is just going to continue to pull in all the humidity. All right, as far as the rain chances, now a couple little sprinkly showers out there. And then we see some sunshine today. Now tonight, that's when we see the line of showers and a few thunderstorms firing up. And this is going to be again tonight talking about the overnight hours early tomorrow morning out there in portions of the hill country and this will continue to work its way down to the southeast with some showers and a couple of thunderstorms but the majority of this is going to be further up to the north yes we will have some rain around here um, but anything strong to potentially severe will be primarily further up there to the north. I was just talking with Mia Montgomery about this and she agrees that yes, this is not definitely going to be a, a repeat of what we had around here last week with that front that moved through and produced some of the severe weather in our area. Now, of course, there is the chance, but again, mainly up there to the north and the sea, or I should say in the overnight hours out there in northwest portions of the hill country would be the best opportunity for it. Humidity is going to be dropping down in behind that front once it finally moves through and that's going to be mid morning after the morning commute tomorrow and it's going to be a gorgeous day tomorrow afternoon and Saturday as well. Humidity is going to work its way back into the picture on Sunday, Sunday and Monday and then drop back down by the middle part of next week and then temperatures. We're going to get like a couple of fronts and sort of a, an extra little push of cooler air going into next week. So we're actually going to be below normal, normal to below normal starting Sunday through at least the middle of next week and even low temperatures. And look at that. We may drop down into the 40s by the middle part of next week for a, a low temperature. So hot today, hot and humid today, and then really beautiful uh, tomorrow afternoon in through the middle of next week and another small rain chance next week. 78 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature is going to make it up to 86. So it's going to be hot and humid, breezy. Now overnight front moves through. Yes, it will touch off a few showers and storms, especially then into tomorrow morning. Some of those may be strong, potentially severe out in the hill country and then further up to the north of our area is going to be the best opportunity for that. We clear out tomorrow afternoon. Fantastic, beautiful Saturday. More clouds Sunday, a couple of showers here and there, maybe Monday, Tuesday. But look at those temperatures, low 70s then first and next week. Nice. Loving that. Yeah. yeah, I like I like this kind of March. Mm hmm much more appropriate. Yeah, once <laughs> we you, get Mike. past today. Yeah. yeah, true, true. Thank right. you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. 648 outside with live cam. We'll wrap up GMSA coming up. We're planting a vegetable garden at KSAT. I'm Sarah Acosta. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA, we partner with the San Antonio Food Bank and we go over how to plant vegetable gardens from seed for beginners. Good morning. Coming up, we have the latest after a teen is suspected of opening fire at a Denver school. Another one injuring two administrators. Also this morning, I'll be tracking the major cross country storm on the move. Now it's bringing tornadoes, damaging winds, hail and something a little extra with the flooding. I want to show you that setup. We'll tell you where it's headed next. And the newlyweds going viral after Taylor Swift sings at their wedding. We'll explain. Plus, we're celebrating. It should have been the lead National Puppy Day that coming up right here on GMA. Traffic troubles continue here in Church following a deadly accident overnight. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. This is I-35 northbound, north of FM 3009 here in Church. This is where the trouble is and where it has been since about two o'clock this morning. Police tell us that a 53-year-old man on a motorcycle was killed after he ran into the back of an 18-wheeler that was in the process of being towed. The motorcycle thrown from his bike. We saw the motorcycle towed away about an hour ago. We have to be careful about what we show because we understand the body still on the highway here. The highway itself still closed. Going northbound, traffic is diverted to the access road. It's best to avoid the area if possible, but if so, allow yourself extra time because traffic is very heavy. Reporting live in shirts, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, art is being incorporated in the San Antonio River Authority projects, including the San Pedro Creek Culture Park.
Tiffany Huetas is going to show us some of those pieces. And then Max Massey takes us through SAPD's recruitment obstacle and driving courses as they look to bring more women into the force this weekend at a special recruiting event. Those stories and much more today on GMSA at 9. And for now, let's get one last look at traffic and the mess there on 35. Uh, and it's not improved at all. In fact, it's uh, become worse minute by minute. Let's get a look there at 35 at Schertz Parkway. You can see it right there that uh, what Katrina was talking about is the mess that has been building for hours now as first responders are working to clear this scene up. It's been uh, reported. It was reported around two in the morning, but we are still now seeing that traffic is starting to build a lot more out there as they are working to exit FM 3009. Pretty much you're going to be stuck in that for a little while now. Let's get you to the map where we have it pinpointed again. 35 northbound at FM 3009. Traffic now backed up uh, past 1604 there on the northeast side on our map. You can get a look there. Uh, crash also reported at Loop 410 eastbound at Villa, Maine, and it is a busy morning out here, Mike. We'll be tracking things throughout the morning. Yeah, at least we don't really have too big a problems or anything going on with the weather this morning. Got a lot of clouds out there. Now, visibility is pretty good out at the airport, and there may be some damp spots here and there. There's been a little bit of mist. We've got these winds coming in here out of the southeast, which is just doing nothing more than pumping in all the humidity. Very, very warm and humid out there. Uh, winds are helping to prevent a lot of fog from forming up. Yes, good news, but again, it just continues to pull this moisture on in here. We are going to be seeing more sunshine than what we saw yesterday. Good news, bad news, because we get up to 86 and plenty of humidity. It's going to feel like a summer day out there. Southeasterly wind, 15 to 20 miles per hour. Then tonight, overnight, the front's going to start to move through. There is a chance for an isolated to a scattered uh, severe storm, a strong to severe storm, high winds and hail being the biggest threats, but that's very small threat. And this is going to be really in the wee hours of tomorrow morning. That front continues to kind of delay its movement through here, so it is going to be roughly 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. There will be some rain around here. The majority of the activity further up to the north of us. Of course, we're all going to be here monitoring the situation. Then beautiful tomorrow afternoon, Saturday, prize winner, more humidity Sunday, cooler temperatures, 70s, nice. actually below normal starting off next week. And look at that, 45 later the, uh, mm. next week. <laughs> yes. Wow. It looks nice, so we just have to get through the overnight. Yes. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. GMA is next. Traffic updates throughout that newscast.